What's up, Instagram? Uh, back for another episode of the live Q&A. Uh, nobody's here yet, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to post it later on YouTube, so uh, you can check this out on YouTube. But um, found my page of missing questions from last week and going to dive in with those. And if anybody has any questions, they can feel always feel free to drop them in. What's up, Sophie DNYC? Thanks for saying hi. Uh, thanks for all of you for being here live. Uh, feel free to drop in any questions on Instagram. I'm coming to you today from Austin, Texas. What's up, WN Trombone? Uh, I've got your question here, the one that, uh, that I missed last time. Um, I'm in Austin, Texas, was here for the Tes Texas Association of Music Schools, uh, played uh, a pretty cool concert tonight with kind of this ghost piano. We're, we're, I'm being exact, I'm exaggerating. Uh, it was a piano that was pre-recorded, a Spirio Steinway piano. Um, this pretty cool technology, it really captures the essence of like a player. So um, if you're checking that out, check out Steinway Spirio piano, uh, Steinway and Con Selmer. My instrument company are um, one company in the same, and so it was cool to be able to do this cross promotion and play for uh, a bunch of people here tonight in Austin. But I had some extra time tonight, so I thought I would jump in here and uh, do a Q&A. So what's up, Vladin Music? Thanks for being here. Andredez Trumpet, hello, Jazzboy2020, what's up? Thanks for being here. Feel free to drop in a question on Instagram. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to go with this list of questions that I found that I lost from last time. There's also a few that were uh, thrown in today, uh, questions from today. Um, so if you want to submit a question in advance to try to have a better chance of getting your question answered, do make sure to follow the stories. I ask for questions every couple of days, uh, maybe once a week, rather. <clears throat> and uh, here we go. So the first question from today that I posted and then immediately got back was, why don't you come to New Orleans? And uh, as it happens, I was just in New Orleans uh, for the GEN conference. Um, so Jazz Education Network Conference. I spoke twice, played with UNT and a bunch of stuff. Uh, so I was just in New Orleans. Unfortunately, probably not coming back anytime soon, but um, hope I hope to come back soon. I hope to play maybe at Snug Harbor one of these days. Um, but for now, my New Orleans time is probably limited. Um, so that's the first question. And we have a few uh, here on Instagram live right now. Yep, Steinway Pianos from Astoria. Yep, it's been around for a long time. When am I coming to New York City? I was just in New York City for Jazz Congress. I'll be back in New York City. Well, I'm going to LA this weekend for the Grammys. And then in two weeks or three weeks, I'll be back in New York. Uh, kind of back and forth between my teaching uh, situation at UNT and then kind of playing in New York and elsewhere. Let's see. From Jazzboy2020, I heard you're doing a master class in a house concert at University of Reno soon. That is true. Uh, the I think it's the 13th and 14th. I'll be, I think the 13th is a Friday. I'll be at the University of Nevada, Reno, uh, working with Josh Reed, trumpet player, who's there. Lucas Pino and myself will be there doing a master class as well as hopefully some lessons. So if you're interested in that, you want to pass that info along if you're in Reno, um, we'll be there. So that'll be really fun. And then, yes, there will be a house concert, and I'm getting uh, the info about the tickets and stuff for that uh, very soon. So you can watch the website or Instagram, whatever. So uh, that will be posted soon if you're in Reno. Um, so that's that's that, and that is a true thing. So uh, th the tour dates I posted a couple days ago, the, the tour poster, so if you want to go check out all the tour dates, we're going to be Texas, New York, Connecticut, California, Arizona, uh, Denver at Dazzle, Reno, uh, Palm Springs, a bunch of places, so you can check that out. Oh, and um, so that'll be great. What is this? A little alert here. Oh, there's other questions here. Why don't you come to Orleans? Oh, here we go. Robbie W. Trombone just asked, takes on ballad playing. Um, yeah, takes on ballad playing. I think it's really important to remember that when you're playing a ballad, to express drama. And 
sometimes I feel like that's something that younger players definitely don't worry about. They're thinking more about what chord do I play and what language do I play on this chord and all of this kind of thing. And I think when you listen to the masters of ballad playing, they're playing with emotion and they're playing with drama. So I like to rem try to remember that myself and try to think about that and talk to my students about it and try to accentuate um, drama. And drama can come in many ways. It could be dynamics. It could be like a range of rhythms. It could be a range of different types of expression, uh, whether it's like affected notes or just kind of anything really trying to bring it to life. I like to try to think, I don't know, like my horn is a voice and I'm trying to express something that could be equally resonant on a trombone or a human voice. So a uh, question from Stephen Feifke, again, he's looking for a recording of No Arrival uh, from the Trombone Day. It's coming, I promise, Stephen. I'm very sorry it's taken so long. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, Robbie W. Trombone, why don't you come to New Orleans? We already addressed that. Uh, here's a question from Enrique D. Bass. On Brutus, were the ideas of March the main, were the Ides of March the main influence of that composition? Uh, no, actually. Um, the Ides of March uh, have something to do with it, but not so much. Um, it has to do with more of the overall theme of the album, the cast of characters album, which obviously is coming. Uh, if you've been paying attention to anything that I've been posting, it's coming on February 28, 2020. Uh, cast of Characters is basically an encapsulation of like characters that you meet in your life. So I thought about Brutus as that person in your life who enters at one point and is a positive influence, and then at some point they turn around and become a negative influence. And um, kind of that two-faced nature of a person or that two-faced nature of that relationship is kind of what I tried to embody in that comp composition. So if you notice, like, the tune speeds up and it slows down and there's kind of a straight eighth note section and a, a swing section and there's different soloists kind of battling back and forth. And that was kind of the, the idea for that composition. Um, but mostly based on the idea of these characters, when if you look at it, uh, further out. So we released two singles so far. The Guru came out a couple weeks ago and then just this past week um, that single uh, Brutus did come out. So thanks for listening Enrique. Appreciate that. And uh, we're gonna keep on going with some more questions here but feel free if you have more questions to ask them. Um, another one from Enrique about Brutus. Also on Brutus, do you have any specific imagery you would think of when playing whoops, when playing the head uh, that's a good question. Do I have any imagery about the head? Well, it's kind of what I just described. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. Oh, going back here. Oh, there's more questions. Very cool. Are you planning to head back to LA with your group to play a Blue Whale too as well? Yes, I am going back to the Blue Whale uh, Sunday, March 8th, March 7th at the Nash in Phoenix. Uh, I tried to go to Sacramento, actually. Jazz Boy 2020. Uh, but it didn't work out this time. Thank you for listening to Brutus. If you haven't listened to it yet, it's on YouTube, Spotify, etc. Uh, it's a kind of a fun tune. It also features a great bass clarinet solo by Lucas Pino. Um, so definitely check that out if you're interested in hearing some cool bass clarinet, clarinet playing. Really, really great. Um, yeah, so we did this ballad question, Brutus question, uh, and the New Orleans question of course. Awesome. Uh, so please feel free to put anything else here at Instagram, but I do have a few other ones. Uh, here's one from WN Trombone, favorite classical trombone solo. And I've always been a fan of the Shulek. I like the uh, Grundal Concerto. That's just fun to play. Um, I kind of always liked the challenge of an art Arthur Pryor thing, Thoughts of Love, or Blue Bells of Scotland, just as like a technical exercise. Um, I used to be a, pretty obsessed with a bunch of Christian Lindbergh records when I was growing up, so um, I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff he recorded that I have no idea, and stuff that was his own original stuff that uh, I don't necessarily know or remember the names of, but definitely check out Classical Repertoire. 
and I'll just throw this in there because it just came to mind. There was a great um, classical trombone quartet that Joe Alessi was in, and they, what was it called? Four of a Kind, I think it was called. And uh, there was a great arrangement of No More Blues, the, the Joe Beam tune that's on there. Uh, and I was obsessed with that. And we did that in my high school with uh, some friends, actually. So a bass trombonist who also ended up going to Eastman with me. His name is Rick Stiles and then two other guys. But anyway, those are some classical recordings. Um, I'm not as up as I should be on my, on my classical stuff, but I mean, I really like the Barat Andante and Allegro. I know it's very simple and probably a little overplayed, but I've always been a big fan. And I actually took that and I turned it into a tune. I took it and turned it into a tune on my first record called Exposition. Um, you can look it up on Spotify or whatever. Uh, the tune is called, what the heck is the name of it? I can't remember. Um, it's like a slow swing, uh, but somebody will go and find it. You'll find it easily if you go and check it out on Spotify. But I definitely took the chord progression from that Andante and Allegro and turned it into uh, uh, the tune that's on that record, which I should probably just pull it up so I don't sound like an idiot and not know the names of my own tunes. Let's check this out right now. It's kind of silly that I don't know the name, right? Um, anyway, so I see some other questions here. What's up, Tristan? Hoping to come to UNT next year. That's awesome. Send in. Uh, make sure you send in your uh, pre-screening. Start working on that stuff as it'll be the same next year as it is now. So go and check that out on the UNT website uh, if you're interested in applying. So the tune is called Eventide. I don't know why I didn't remember that. Eventide. Um, so that's, that's that. Uh, I'm going to jump back to some other questions that we had from last week that I didn't get to answer. I know WN Trombone is here, so I'm going to kind of jump on that question he asked before. He asked this question, and I don't think I gave a really good answer in the last Q&A, so I'm going to try to answer it again. He says, how to gain media influence amongst trombonists and others? Put out, and this question is put out more content. And so the answer is yes. <clears throat> put out more content. Always put out more content. No matter where you are on your journey through trombone playing, whether you're you know, in high school now, in college now, or professional now. I think that no matter what, it's always about documenting the journey, and it's about documenting the things that you're passionate about, and things about sharing the things you like, sharing things you know about, um, and just not trying to posture about things you don't know. Um, trying to be honest, and just be a normal, cool person. Be yourself, and just put out content about what you know, because there's always somebody that can learn from what you're doing, uh, because there's always somebody that's probably a little less experienced than you. And I definitely tell this to my students all the time. They're in college. They're at UNT. They're, you know, studying to be jazz musicians. And they're getting lessons uh, from me and all the other faculty. So they have something to say to, for example, some college, some other college students or other high school students or maybe elementary school students. They know some things about playing the trombone that they can share. And I try to encourage them to do that because... Um, that's how you start to grow and learn. And so the thing about social media is that that's just a place to express those things and it's just a place to share. And for me, um, I just decided when I left my first teaching job at Florida State University, I was gonna really focus on doing uh, the content game and making videos and focusing on that, which turned into basically my media company, record label, outside of music, and helping other artists do the same because it's the state of attention in 2020. People are looking at their phones. They're not looking at billboards or magazines or any other traditional advertising place. Everybody's just consuming content about the things that they like. So if you are a person that makes trombone content, you're going to find other trombonists around that like trombone-related content or jazz content or classical music content or whatever it is. So if you want to gain media influence, as WN Trombone put it, um, yeah, you should be putting out content and you should be trying to put it out as much as you can. I strive to put it out every day. If you follow me, you know that doesn't happen. And that's my goal. I always say every day, if I think of something that I can put out, I do it every day. I have a team that does help me sometimes, but it's always me posting the stuff. Um, we do, Outside of Music does it for other artists. 
you know, we post on their social media, we come up with ideas and uh, for content and hashtags and all this different strategy kind of stuff, we do that on an ongoing basis. So it's something that I'm thinking about a lot. So I just try to apply it to myself. But if you're a person that um, wants to gain influence on social media, you need to be posting on social media. Uh, if you want to be gaining followers, you need to be posting. So if you want to really get into it, you need to post every day. And whether that's a picture, a video, or some combination thereof, you know, there's other people on the internet that'll tell you to post, you know, 30 or 40 times a day. But I think you have to pick your battles and um, you have to try to put stuff out that's somewhat good. You know, you can't just put crap out. Uh, sometimes it ends up being not very good, but I just think that overall, if you continue to not worry so much about the quality and just worry about putting stuff out on a consistent basis, you'll end up better off in the long run. So that's what I focus on. Uh, so that's how to answer that question. So W and Trombone, I hope that addresses your question. The question again, if you're just joining, was how to gain media influence amongst trombonists and others. Put out more content. And again, the short answer is yes. So feel free, drop in any questions here live on Instagram. Uh, question from, I think, Taylor. Wait, wait. This guy left a comment before. Uh, well, his screen name is T Kill Me. T Kill, T Kill Me? Sorry, ruining your name. But um, do you have any tips for improving? I think he means improvising. I'm mediocre with it, and I have a big part in a solo called Dream of the Return. That's a Pat Metheny tune. Uh, so let me take it to the state. And I really want to make. My mark can give some magic. Well, the first thing to do is to probably internalize the chord changes, play them on the piano. If you don't know how to do that, find somebody that can show you and get familiar with the sounds. I know that tune, actually. I did a transcription of it, an arrangement for somebody. Yeah, improvisation. That's what I thought. All good. Um, um, so learn the tune, learn the changes, get comfortable with all the sounds individually. So what I would do is make like a garage band loop or like I real be loop with each sound, each chord, and start to improvise on each sound, like not worrying too much about quote unquote connecting the changes yet, but just get comfortable with each one. If it's D minor, if it's G7, I forget exactly the change of that tune. But get super comfortable with each sound and then start stringing them together and then find ways to make melodies over that. You know, don't just play a bunch of random stuff. You know, that tune is a, it's like a ballad-ish, right? And then it kind of ramps up. So you got to make uh, a melodic statement. You play trombone, you're not going to pl ever play as many notes as a saxophone, right? So you're not going to all this craziness. Um, so I recommend doing that. Get comfortable with all the sounds, play them on the piano. Uh, start to connect the chord changes together and then start to play melodies, sing melodies, hear melodies kind of over and through the changes. So that's what I would recommend uh, for any tune, but specifically that tune as well, The Dream of the Return, Pat Metheny. Another question live here from Kai Not Cool. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Kai. Uh, what does the music future look like for a jazz trombonist? Well, um, I don't know, but I can guess that things will kind of continue to be a little bit challenging, I suppose, um, not in a bad way, but in a way that makes uh, us musicians, us trombonists, have to create our own opportunities, create our own successes. Um, there's not too many trombone players that I can think of. There are some that get kind of plucked out of school or out of the scene and thrown into a big gig where they're able to just kind of sustain on just that one gig alone. It definitely uh, requires a kind of a range of knowledge and opportunity and playing and doing all different types of gigs, being able to sight read, being able to improvise, being able to play styles, being able to sub in any different kind of group. Um, I think trombone is one of the things that really sounds great in a section and sounds great as an ensemble and will always be a, an essential part of like an instrumental ensemble like an orchestra or a, a big band and so you're always going to have those opportunities unfortunately in big band settings that's not always the most lucrative but uh, you have to balance the art with the reality of the world so you have to do some gigs that are going to help pay the rent and you have to do some gigs that are for artistic vision, freedom, etc. Um, 
I think you just have to go into it with an open mind and knowing that it's not going to be super easy. I mean, it's going to be challenging, but it's definitely worthwhile, you know, for those musical moments that you dream of because they exist and they're out there and you're going to go and get them. But uh, sometimes, you know, it's a grind just like any other job because you're playing jobbing type of gigs, like playing weddings every weekend or, you know, playing a Broadway show for the hundredth time. You know, it's not the same inspiring musical experience, but you do get to blow into a tube for a living. So that's pretty cool. You know, simple, but uh, it's, it's, you have to be diverse. You have to be able to make your own uh, opportunities and you have to be able to you know, be under your own devices. You have to you have to make your own motivation as a trombonist. And uh, Kai, you are welcome. All right, a couple more questions tonight. Uh, let's see here. We have... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you have braces there, T. Kilma. I also had braces. Um, I had braces 7th, 8th, ninth grade, and it was challenging. I used to use a bumper, like a little plastic rubber bumper that went over the top of the braces um and it was super helpful for me but it was great once they come off it really was like a cap so as soon as you can get them off just know that things are going to work out better for you after they come off so do whatever the orthodontist says don't screw it up stop eating popcorn stop eating chewing gum and all that stuff uh so yeah d just do what they say so you can get them off as soon as possible Here's a good question. This is a great question, actually, from Parker Phillip underscore. Uh, how do you keep a solo interesting when there's only one chord change? Well, two things. One is being able to go inside and outside of that one chord change, having a total understanding of the harmonic situation that you're in. For example, a tune that is just like that one chord for a long time would be maybe a caravan, where you have C7 flat 9 or C7 sharp 9 or C7 alt, depending on what chord symbol you're looking at. So what are you going to do to make it interesting? Well, rhythm, you're going to play rhythm, you're going to play melody, and you're going to go inside and outside the chords. So that's a five chord, so you're going to play C7, and you, maybe you play that. It's one, like F minor, and you go back and forth between F minor and C7, you play all the different versions of C7, you play the triads that exist within the altered scale uh, that go with C7, but mostly what you're going to do is you're going to listen to the rhythm section, and you're going to play with them. With them, not over them, with them. Use their ideas to complement your ideas. Um, that's what I do. I listen more than I think. You know, I'm listening and reacting to what's happening around me. And I said this in the last live stream, and I'll probably say it a million more times, but ask yourself the question, what does the music need right now? Not what do I want to play right now. What does the music need? Is it loud? Is it soft? Does it need to be exciting? Does it need to be chill? Does it need to be any number of things? Just ask yourself that question. What does the music need right now? That's what I would say about any tune, but especially one uh, with one chord change. All right, Jazz Boy, another question. Uh, unrelated question. Oops. But are you, are you or not a huge fan on movies? You haven't. I don't watch movies. Sorry, that's the short answer. I don't watch movies. I haven't gone to the movies uh, since I moved to New York. I moved in 2010. No, that's a lie. I went to two movies. I went to Bruno once when I was teaching in Florida. That's the, maybe the last movie I went to. So that was a while ago. I'm not really into movies. Um, yeah, I hope you get those braces off soon, man. They're they're uh, they're a pain in the neck. For sure. Okay, those are all the questions. Feel free to uh, drop in a question uh, if you want. I got a couple more here that I, from the week. Uh, and I got about a couple more minutes to go here, but um, feel free to drop them in here at Instagram. Thanks for being here if you're just joining us. Um, I answered this last time, but I thought this really kind of bared repeating from Caleb Neary. He asked, he asked, what were you? What's true success? And uh, I will repeat my answer again because I felt like it was kind of important and uh, people all, often say like, I'm going to play with this person or I need to achieve this or achieve that. Um, but my definition is that I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. And so that has a lot of meanings and it has a lot of different um, 
connotations. It has a lot of different ways that it will work out, both financially, personally, life-wise, and everything. But that's, to me, important, uh, is to figure out what you want to do and actually go and try to actually make your life what it is, what you want. Because different aspects of a jazz career sometimes suck you down a hole. Um, you can kind of get trapped. And if you're not taking control, if you're not actually actively guiding where you're trying to head, you'll do, you can, in certain situations, get sucked in and kind of driven in a direction that you didn't necessarily think you wanted to go. Uh, not that it's a bad thing, because maybe you should go there, but just to be aware that that is a thing and that you should um, definitely think about that. So that was an important question, and I hope that you'll think about that more if you haven't. Like, what does your success look like? And uh, trying to define it. And for me, that's just kind of freedom to do the artistic projects I want, to play with who I want, um, to be able to make the projects I want, um, all of those sorts of things. So uh, a few more. Oh, wow. Some more questions dropped in. Uh, pick a favorite jazz tune. What jazz tune would it be and why? Uh, that changes all the time. But uh, right now, my favorite is probably nobody else but me. Why? Because I played it tonight. <laughs> and uh, uh, I often think of it when I think of Jimmy Heath. And Jimmy Heath passed away this week. Um, Jimmy Heath played on a record with Kenny Dorham where they recorded Nobody Else But Me. Uh, it's just called Showboat. It's a Kenny Dorham record. Uh, it's one of my favorites, and um, you can check that one out. But that's why uh, that's my favorite today. But it's changing all the time. It was I Wish I Knew a couple weeks ago. It's another jazz standard, I Wish I Knew. What aspects do you take into account when working for the first time with an already cons consolidated section? I mean, if you're a backup. Oh, that's a really good question. Good, thank you for that question, uh, Segura Music. Um, so the, the basic answer is you should make it so that the people don't notice that somebody else is there. Um, you should try to play exactly like whoever you're subbing for, period. Um, even if you have a different concept, it doesn't matter. You're trying to make it so that they don't notice because you want them to call you again, I would imagine, um, if it was me and I was subbing for, I don't know, whoever. You want to play the parts, you know, with the same level of intensity, the same level of accuracy as somebody that's been there every single day. Um, so try to do as best you can to fit in the vibe. So listen to the lead player, match the articulations, match the style. Listen if they're using slide vibrato, lip vibrato. Are they doing turns? Are they doing huge, big airplane falls? Are they doing falls um, down the partials? Start to analyze those things when you're listening to the section, listen to recordings, be, and then just ask questions sometimes like, hey, how do you like to phrase this kind of thing? But mostly try not to have to ask any questions and just match and try to fit in. And don't make any suggestions. Don't try to be the hero. Don't tell anybody that, oh, it's written this way. If you want to get called back, just be cool, show up, play the parts right, don't make mistakes, don't draw attention to yourself, and support the lead players, and play with good style, articulation, intonation, all the good things as you already know. Um, especially when you're a sub, your job is to make sure that that person who's calling you wants to call you again. At least that's how I think about it. You want that person to want to call you back. Do you ever help players online over Instagram or anything? I'm thinking maybe I could send you some recordings and get your opinion and tips on them. Uh, yes, I do. If people send me recordings, I try to listen and or watch and send feedback. If you definitely want feedback online, I do have a virtual studio and you can sign up for a subscription to that and you can get a monthly lesson on Skype. Um, and I post lessons there every week and there's like 100 lessons that are in the archive so there's a lot of information there so if you're looking for specific feedback there's and there's a facebook group where if you put my students in the virtual studio if you post in the virtual studio facebook group i will 100 percent listen and uh, give feedback on instagram i cannot guarantee but i do try as much as i can uh, to give feedback if i have time uh jazz boy i don't know what you're sorry to hear i've been looking at questions uh, Segura, you're very welcome. I uh, hope to get to Costa Rica soon. Uh, somebody actually reached out to me from there, so hopefully in June maybe I might be in Costa Rica. Would you can hear another question from Joseph? Sorry, 
from Jazz Boy 2020, would you consider Michael Deese as your favorite jazz trombonist idol, or perhaps Michael F. Gordon? Well, Michael F. Gordon was my very first jazz trombone teacher. Um, so he's definitely a hero and idol of mine. I used to drive down from Rochester, New York, which is in Western New York, down to New York City. It's about a five or six hour drive, depending on traffic and weather and such. But um, I used to drive down for lessons with Wycliffe. Uh, so yeah, he's a huge idol. And yeah, Michael Deese is a monster. I mean, he's a bad dude. Uh, big fan of his music and his playing, of course. Um, I went up to Michigan State back in November to work with him and his studio, so that was super fun. Um, but yeah, so Michael and I have been sending actually some students back and forth. Some of my students are now at MSC, former students from UNT are now at MSU, and some of the MSU cats are now coming to UNT. So him and I have a great relationship, actually, and send students back and forth and kind of Try, we played this summer together at the International Trombone Festival, and I hope to be able to play with him some more soon because he's uh, he was always pushing me, for sure. You know, he can play a heck of a lot of a trombone, a ton of trombone. It's crazy. So much trombone. Love Michael Deese. But, yeah, Wycliffe was my first teacher, so he's definitely also a big inspiration. Uh, Blue Jay. Yeah, that's because it's a... Michael Deese, tune Blue Jay, references to Jay Jones' Blue Trombone. Yeah, I, that's on the new record, I think. I did listen to that. Yeah, I think it's a direct, I don't think there's any, he's try, trying to hide the JJ influence. Uh, if I know Mike, he's not trying to hide that, that at all. So, uh, 100%. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Uh, this is from Cavazos Ryan. Uh, how many famous trombone players have you met and who's your favorite? Well, I don't know. I've met probably most of them, I guess. Not most of them. I don't really know. I don't know what qualifies as a famous trombonist either. So uh, this is a difficult one to answer. Uh, but yeah, I know Ryan Keberly and Marshall Jilks and Michael Deese and Michael Davis played on his big band record. Wycliffe was my teacher. Steve Teray was my teacher. Steve Davis, I've gone to his house for lessons. Elliot Mason, I subbed for him in the Lincoln Center Band. Uh, so I know Vince and... Chris, the other guys in the Lincoln Center band. Uh, Joe Alessi was teaching at Juilliard, and I don't know. I guess I know him. But um, I don't know. Ryan, who are you asking about? Uh, I know a lot of people, but not everybody, for sure. Definitely not everybody. Um, here's a great last question, unless anyone joins and wants to ask anything else. To wrap up tonight's Q&A from Austin, Texas, um, this is from Gabe Dot Funky. Uh, he says, "Why do you do what you do in the trombone slash music world, and what led you here?" Uh, that's a really good question. I think also a very thoughtful question and a, a little bit hard to answer. <laughs> you know, why do you do what you do? Um, I play trombone because I fell in love with the sound of the trombone after being forced to play the trombone when I was in. Uh, fourth grade because I was tall and I didn't like it and my mom will tell the story over and over again about how uh, I almost quit she almost let me quit when I was in seventh grade uh, or was it sixth maybe sixth grade but then I had a really amazing teacher in middle school who kind of got me back on track and I wanted to be a classical player I wanted to play in an orchestra um, I was also a classical singer and I did that kind of thing for a while and early high school and through that I got connected with a big band that did all of the music of Duke Ellington and um, that's what switched everything for me from classical music to jazz and um, my other my friend Rick who was also playing trombone bass trombone at the time was super into jazz and kind of at that time he kind of crossed over into classical so we kind of switched roles and I kind of became the jazz person and he kind of became the uh, the classical guy, at least from my high school. Mahmoud, hello. Hello from Iran. Hi. Nice. Glad you could be here. I hope you're all right. I hope everything's well with you. Um, so to go back to the question, um, what led me here? Uh, wow, this might be just a long rambling answer, but 
Um, so I fell in love with the sound of the trombone and kind of, and then Duke Ellington and jazz. And then I wanted to move to New York. Uh, I didn't get into Juilliard for my undergrad, so I went to the Eastman School of Music, which was a great experience. And that's just in my hometown of Rochester, New York. So I just stayed there and did that. Um, that was a great experience, but I still wanted to move to New York. So for my grad school, I took a year off to focus only and solely on getting into Juilliard. And luckily for me, it worked out, and I got to Juilliard and, and moved to New York and wanted to play, realized kind of what the scene is like and kind of the options that there are and kind of tried to broaden my horizons to do different things, started doing some touring with a pop group, started doing um, my own stuff, my own records, developing ideas for online content, online ways of you know furthering my career, and took a teaching job in Florida, opened up, was teaching there for two days a week, uh, then came back to New York, quit that job, doubled down on the content stuff, online stuff, and I don't know, I'm just trying to bring the trombone back to the forefront of the music, I guess. I feel like, you know, if you look back, Tommy Dorsey, uh, Glenn Miller, both trombonists, and led big bands were the stars of the show, and just, you know, made the trombone what it is and kind of they were the cats and now sometimes we get not cast to the side but thought of maybe not prominently within the jazz or any other kind of context so uh, you know that's why I do what I do and I think that there's a space for people to share real trombone advice there's other people that do great videos of playing uh, which I've tried to share my own playing too because obviously I, I'm an artist and I want to share my music but I think there's a real uh, need, I and mean, I can tell from the questions that I get from p players all over the world that there's a need for knowledge about improvising on the trombone, about playing trombone in the jazz setting or improvised setting. Um, and so I want to be that person that can kind of help those people uh, if I can. So that's why there's like a million videos over there on YouTube. So um, not a million, but there's a lot, there's a lot of videos of different exercises and stuff, and that's why I have the virtual studio and why I post videos on Instagram of little exercises and tunes and try to talk about learning tunes and do these Q&As and all of that. So uh, I just hope that one or two people end up with something from these and that it you know, helps them along their journey, just like you know, people like Wycliffe Gordon gave me the time of day and uh, really inspired me to take my career forward after that. So I think that's a great question to end on. Uh, so thanks to Gabe.Funky on uh, IG for that one. Uh, but thanks for being here, whether you're watching live now on Instagram or you're watching later on YouTube. I uh, appreciate you watching this Q&A. Uh, again, I saw a question earlier of my goals for 2020. Uh, that's getting my album out, Cast of Characters, out on February 28th. That's a huge goal, and that's coming out. All the singles have already started. Brutus, the contemporary, out this week, and... Um, also, the Guru out at the beginning of 2020. So those are there. More videos coming soon of that. And the other goal of mine is to do these Q&As. So I'm trying to hold myself to a weekly Q&A. It might not always be at the same time. Uh, it would be more ideal if it was at the same time, I'm sure. But uh, just trying my best. And uh, we all have crazy schedules. So this is uh, this week's episode. So thanks for being here. Um, Hey man, Jazz Boy 2020, I'm really glad you're here and thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Uh, hope, hope to connect with you either in Reno or maybe in Sacramento sometime. All right, so thanks so much. Feel free to drop questions if you think of any in the comments below on YouTube or send me a DM on Insta with your questions and uh, we'll save them up for the next one. So have a great uh, rest of the week and we'll see you next time.